Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today is finally a sunny day after like four days of overcast sky and fog. And I'm gonna take um, you know, an hour to be outside. And so here I have my very minimalistic sketch tools, two pens and two water brushes, my watercolor palette and my Arteza watercolor sketchbook. Now I'm ready to go out. This is my backpack right here. I'm gonna put everything in here. And here's my portable stool and my gooseneck tripod attached to an old sketchbook. Okay, here we go. Time to go out. Just feels so nice to be out here in the sunshine. And first of all, I'm gonna go grocery shopping. And every time I pass by this community, there's this cute black cat greeting me, playing with me. So I was planning to sketch something before grocery shopping in my community, but I, to be honest, I, I was so uninspired. And before I go home, I just decided to stay at this spot um, to just to sketch the houses between these pine trees. So, as always, when I um, start sketching, I like to begin with a, a waterproof fine liner pen. So today, I'm using my brand new Unipen drawing pen, 0.5mm tip. So from observation, I see two clusters of trees, and I'm beginning with the, uh, the ones on the left-hand side. As you can see, I begin with a tree trunk, starting from the top of the tree. And then from the tree trunk, I'm building those larger branches on both sides of the trunk, long and short. Some look shorter because they're covered by the uh, foliage. So now I'm just focusing on all of the uh, tree trunk parts and the tree branches that's visible outside the foliage. And drawing the other side of the tree trunk and at the same time, connecting the large branches around it and using broken lines and you know drawing multiple times to, uh, to accentuate the outline of the trunk which is pretty strong this is my real-time drawing speed and after drawing the trunk and the branches I'm starting to build up the foliage starting from the top left hand side very random organic shapes drawing very quickly because i know I, I don't need to be exactly the same as what's out there just really relax my hand and draw those wriggly lines and i see another tree trunk right beside this the first one behind it so there's you know multiple trees merging together into a big area of greeneries and just using broken lines to show the texture of the tree trunk and now I'm starting to connect the right side of the pine trees the tree trunk the bottom of the trunk the texture for the trunk and then there's another one behind it using loose lines to show the texture of the trunk. And I see the uh, tree trunks need a lot of accentuations because uh, there are actually a lot of shadows on them. And keep building up the forest foliage here and there using very loose lines. And as I mentioned before in my previous videos, anyone who can hold a pen and write, they can draw. So these lines, as you can see, they're not perfect lines. Um, you know, anyone can make lines like these. The only thing that we need to do is to let go of perfection and know how to translate what we see into these abstract symbols. And I believe that anyone can draw the complex things in the world in simple ways. And now I'm drawing the triangular rooftop of the house in between the two trees and now I'm drawing the playground structures in the foreground, the monkey bars, the climbers, and the other stuff. And 
there's another little tree in front of these, you know, playground stuff. On the edge, on the left hand side, drawing very quickly without thinking too much about technical skills, because the more we think, the more stressed we are. Um, you know, the more constrained that we feel, just let go. You know, f- feel that we have a lot of freedom to express. And you know, keep adding these inner foliage details here and there, with squiggly lines. Adding some more branches here and there. Now I'm actually drawing another house behind and the windows and the rooftop structure and textures. Some more um, balcony doors there, windows. Some more little windows and the fence in front of these houses. Vertical texture lines. Finishing up the uh, details with the back doors of these houses, and finishing up the edge of the rooftop, and actually another one behind in the little distance. Some smaller, shorter trees, and some more evergreen trees on the right right hand side in the foreground. Lots of loose lines, and now I'm just taking my time just to add some final foliage textures using wriggly lines here and there, and to add you know a bit of more detail for this house in the middle. the line work. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So as always, when painting a landscape, I like to start with the sky first. So I'm just wetting that area first with clear water by squeezing my pretty watery Hobain brand water brush with a large tip. It's a round brush. And grabbing some cerulean blue. And because the uh, sky area is already wet, the blue can spread out pretty um, smoothly with a bit of translucency. As you can see, I'm not covering every single space with this solid blue. I'm leaving some, you know, some stripes uh, white to show a bit of clouds in between and the moving air. A lot of times, the sky is not just you know solid blue. I'm trying to uh, make my sky more dynamic with uh, different layers of the same blue by mixing more or less water into the same color, cerulean blue. We just need one color and we can make the sky area really interesting. Hey, so now I'm ready to move on to the bottom part of the picture, the houses and the lawn. So just wetting those areas first with clear water by squeezing my brush. And now I'm grabbing some yellow ochre and medium yellow. So this is just the first layer for these houses to suggest the bright sunshine, nice and warm. And yellow green, lots of yellow, just a little bit of green. And wet on wet, very thin green around the bottom of the fence, just to give a variety of different tones. And grabbing some dark brown just to paint the rooftops very quickly and loosely. Okay, and now I'm gonna further add some more yellow ochre mixed with um, a little bit of orange for the trees behind are pretty bright. You know, with uh, bright sunshine on them. And very thin green mixed with medium yellow to get this first layer for the forest, for the row of trees behind, right here. And mixing again. So every brush stroke is actually a slightly different kind of light green. 
and for the first layer, I like to keep it pretty light because later on, when I add darker tones and also having less water, more pink pigment, I'm gonna bring out more contrast. So in the beginning, I like to keep it pretty watery and light. And grabbing some Viridian Green and a bit of Burnt Sienna to get this dark green tone for this evergreen tree in the foreground. So the same kind of trees in different light conditions, the green tone looks a bit different. Okay, so that's pretty much the first layer for everything is done. Now I'm ready to move on to the second layer. So I'm going to begin intensifying the forest. So I just grab some radiant green, mixing with quite a lot of um, um, burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine blue to get this dark tone of green. And I also switch to my medium tip Sakura water brush. As you can see, I'm using these very really loose little choppy brush strokes because not every single area from the first layer is being covered. So if you look at the reference photo on the corner, um, it's just pretty much like a dark solid green, almost a black silhouette for the forest. But we see much more in real life from real life observations. The trees are not flat at all. It contains layers of different kinds of greens, dark greens, almost blue and browns blending nice and soft together and just grabbing a bit of ultramarine blue to add the shadows for the houses here and there especially underneath the roofs also um, the shadows come from the trees in front of them so add a bit more loose brown for the uh, winter trees in the distance Keep adding more shadows and the color for the uh, glass windows and doors. More shadows, nice and loose with leftover colors. Very nice green and lots of um, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for this tree in the foreground. Very dark tone. And add a few brush strokes of shadows on the grass. The tree trunks had a very um, dark brown tones, not throughout, but the middle part, you know, has bits of gold yellow of the sunshine. But most of it, it contains the shadows from the foliage here and there. And painting the shadow on the grass. Because right now it's winter, the temperature is about 5 degrees Celsius, it's pretty um, chilly, and it takes a very, very long time for the paint to dry. So I waited for like 5 minutes for the surface to dry a little bit before I add the final layer, more contrast and intensity for the forest. Again, it's a mix of Viridian Green, Ultramarine Blue, and Burnt Sienna. That's my recipe for greeneries. The more burnt sienna and ultramarine blue we add into the green, the darker the green tone is. Again, very thin choppy brush strokes here and there. Now these trees are looking more dynamic with layers of greens from light to medium to dark. And again, we really need to control that. We don't need to cover every single space of the previous layers. And some final polish, the shadows on the rooftops here and there. And that's it. Here is a look of my finished sketch. And I think a sketch should not be a copy of reality, but our very quick reaction of what we see and what we understand in the very quick spontaneous expressions using lines and colors. And I think a sketch should always be more lively than the real thing. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I update my channel two to three times a week. 
and I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day.